and do what Dean did tonight? Um, I don't think so. I know when Evan Russell did it, it was pretty special. Um, but he was he was good. It would have been nice to see him run out the, the ball he hit down the third baseline first at bat. I think he was trying to sell that it went off his foot, or I hope. I didn't ask him, and I'm glad I didn't ask him because he didn't need to come out of the game. Um, probably the rain there at the end cost him a foot. It would have been made it fun, but as he gets older, he'll, you know, he'll like that he did what he did tonight, but I think he'll appreciate the win more. It was a pretty good win. I think we were fortunate enough to play well. Um, it was kind of like a DJ Khaled song is what I said to somebody in there. You got the, it was a great win, like a great song, but when that guy chimes in, it kind of ruins the song. We had a couple goofy things in that game uh, that you'd like to erase, but you know, overall, I think Dean will appreciate that it was a win. And, and again, fortunate because you know, they're, they're here playing us because they wanted to be in a regional last year and maybe deserved of I am on the committee, but I don't think they'll have that issue this year. So it was a good win for our team. What about Dean's swing allows him to have a night like tonight? He's just strong. And then he was in the cage today and uh, some guys and I jumped in on the fun were joking. His swing looked really good, um, but he doesn't look tough anymore. We were joking about, you know, the black eye and the swelling has almost gone away. Um, he's he's a handsome fella, according to other people. So the swing looked good. He looks good and he's strong, um, but it's, you know, there's there's not a lot of extra riffraff going on there. Um, that's something we spend a lot of time doing. Guys like Jared Dickey, KT, have worked really hard in these batting cages, especially with Coach Elander, kind of cutting out the fat when they first get here, or the, the extra movements in their swing. And uh, Dean has always, you know, since we've inherited him, always had a very compact, repeatable, uh, very polished swing. Tony, when you're, you're playing a maybe a better midweek team than, than some others that you'll see during the course of the season. It's not go down 2 nothing early. It's said about your team to kind of, you know, it wasn't a great start, but they, they really rubbed it up. In the yeah, game. bigger name, I think, is fair to say. And, a, you know, they threw their guy, their ace at us, who, uh, you know, um, he, that guy's going to get plenty of outs, and he made some of our guys look foolish at times. I think our guys just did a good job of coming back, like you're talking about, but also, um, you know, putting together some good at-bats against him because of what started either last night or this morning, they, they were excited about the opportunity to compete today. And I think they've been that way about every game, to be honest with you. The problem is if you, if you have lulls creep in, you'll get exposed. Um, because to me, I, I can reflect back. I mean, Asheville's a lot better. They're good. They threw a lot of strikes against us. East Tennessee State's always played very well against us. If you have those lulls, you, you'll get exposed. But our group is talented enough if they come with the approach they had at the park today where like there's this stuff we've been dying for this extra leadership extra communication guys ask coming to me forward with things um you know just communicating and, and so we we let them kind of run with it a little bit just just some things that are positive in the hallways then i think the percentages will tilt in our favor a little bit what do you think you've gotten that extra communication with this group i think some hard lessons learned um, maybe in, in the past, um, but also you got, uh, there were some winning teams last year in the end, the postseason where you guys might hit on this, this or this, but in the office we're like, man, the core of that team is guys who have learned hard lessons and good lessons and, and kind of formulated the deal. Anyway, that's, that's a personal tangent. We've talked about it there. For our team in particular, you got a guy like Blake Burke and, and Christian Moore that watched Trey Lipscomb every day. They know exactly what to do. Whether they want to do it or not is up to them. And and so if they take responsibility, and, and there's others too, Cal, Chuck, if they take ownership for what they they need to do and handle their business, then they can move on to the next best thing is make sure the other guys are doing that too. And uh, guys like KT and, and Hunter Ensley, uh, I think, saw what works and what doesn't work the last two or three years. And, and so they want this year to be to be a good year, and they're they're kind of pressing the button uh, that they should be. How would you assess Snead's performance out there on the mound? It was good. I mean, um, I think just to the start. I mean, I don't know if you would ask about Combsy, but the top of the order is a mess. If you're a pitcher, you got a kid who's from the state of Tennessee and Jones, who's a really good player, and he's got a lot of experience and can really run. And so he just stayed on a breaking ball against Combsy, and then you got one of the most electric players in the country. And then what I kept saying in the office, and I'm not knocking Cole Pepper, he's he's gonna get his his money this summer, but uh, the guy after him might be more dangerous. 
And so that guy comes through with a laser with two RBIs. So the fact that, you know, Snead could, could keep it together and, and kind of get through those guys, and again, Combs could keep it together, and you could even say Loy is a freshman. I mean, it's tough to kind of end the game in that situation, kind of keep it together was something that might get lost in the score, that all three guys kind of battled through. But uh, because Snead um, had a little more success, he, he kind of won that race between he and Combs. We were trying to build both those guys' pitch count to about 60 pitches. And, um, you know, Combs kind of ran through some pitches quicker than Snead did. And, um, you know, both of them pieced it together for us and did a nice job. Well, did listen to get Ariel out there. What is he kind of able to do and not do? Yeah, he can't swing at all. So we wouldn't have him base run either because he could uh, potentially injure that thing. And, and it's, you know, basically full use on defense. And I just don't want to put him in a position where he's asked to play um, defense with the game on the line because he's such a good defender. We may use him in that situation, and it's his first go around. Now, he's not a kid who gets nervous. Um, but also a little bit of it, it was, even though the kid's a goofball, um, he, he probably loves being out there as much as anybody, and the guys love him. So we kind of saw it as a reward. Uh, I mean, trust me, we're trying to win the game, and he's a good shortstop, but kind of a cool thing for the team that – uh, they came together again, came to the park with a great approach today. And uh, because they played that well, I, I think it was one thing that helped him get in the game. But he's also going to be in the game defensively with, with the money on the line, so to speak. So you talked about things that maybe get lost in the shuffle. What about Inslee hitting the ball hard a couple times today, kind of getting some things going and kind of starting to bring those numbers up a little bit? In a two strike hit by pitch. Um, I, you know, well, I would stand in there because I was just trying to get on base, but I, I don't know that many guys don't move their feet with just the way um, that the kid throws, you, you know, with Owen throwing the ball the way that he does, but Ensley stayed in there and got the thing going early too with the hit by pitch. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's really what we want in center field, great communicator, not afraid of the wall, can do all things well out there. And then at the plate, we talked last time we were in here just about fighting, and he kind of fought his way on. and. Um, you know, kind of tomahawk the one pitch for the for the ball to right center. Um, so it was good for him to get that that whole rally going there. What was your reaction to Billy and Christian's homers? They were <laughs> pretty good off the bat. Yeah, Billy's was crazy. Um, just that he stayed to the ball, um, where, whereas that's normally one the average hitter pulls off. But just extra staying to the ball means you kind of usually lace it like he did towards the first baseman. To hit it that high and that far, is a, a tribute, you know, to how strong he is and how much bat speed he has. And he's a big guy. That was the first thing I, you know, when I met Todd Helton, he's just a big dude. And Jermaine Dye was at the park today. Some of our guys had to get educated on who he is. They definitely need to know who he is. That's a big guy. And, and Billy's just a, a big person. And he, he's really made himself into a strong guy. And Simo's kind of always been that. But, you know, the home runs are great uh, to me. I love Blake Burks at bat more than anything. That, I mean, the fact he's now kind of copying Kavar's tears and, you know, going from one foul pole to the other is pretty dangerous. And I know he, he went home. That, that second at bat was probably his favorite and my favorite. Um, thank you to the fans that stuck it out in the rain. I thought we'd have a huge crowd tonight, but weather wasn't good. Um, and we got one guy in there that's chirping at one of our players, which is rare. That's not rare in the SEC, but it's rare here. And I heard it, and Blake heard it too. And uh, that guy probably helped Blake in his next at bat. Not that we wanted him to, but he took that motivation into that second AB and drove that thing into left field for good reason. I've never seen that guy before, so I don't think he's a loyal fan. Not worried about that. I saw him over there sipping on his beer, and I can't do it now in Knoxville anymore. But I've been to a bar or two, and that ain't a guy I'd, I'd hang out with and, and have a beverage with. One or two more guys. Kind of on that note, this might be a dumb question, but I think Dean's got eight hits, six home runs, a triple, one single. Any specific reason for that? I know you'll take you know, the, the good ABs, but. Yeah, no, I, I think um, his approach in BP is really polished, and uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a pro approach where he's looking to backspin the ball, and, uh, you know, for the balls that he's made contact with, if he does backspin it, it comes off differently than it would for. You know, we, we could pick out another hitter. It's it's really a different level of strength uh, that helps him get that carry on that ball. I mean, he's hit some some low, low-line drives that will go out of the park, even to dead center. So it'll even out, and he'll probably have, you know, a little bit more of a, a regular natural balance to his numbers. I think 
the one crazy thing for him is he's he's put up good numbers so far, and he, he doesn't even have as many at bats as others because of you know having some soreness. What about Dryling's homer? Obviously, kind of turn the tide there to the deepest part of the ballpark, the opposite way. Yeah, um, you know we do have a little bit of a challenge making out the lineup every day, and. Um, you get to the fact that we're playing a team from Kansas and Dylan's from Kansas. It's kind of like, well, you got to at least have him out there, even though, you know, Bomer's throwing from, from way over here. Um, and it worked out in our favor, but the first two, uh, you know, I brought up the sour thoughts about Burke's first at bat and KT's first at bat. Those guys didn't look good. And I, I wouldn't want to stand in there left handed against that guy. So the fact he followed that up and then did hit it to the deepest part of the park is, is pretty wild. Um, so. He's a guy that's pretty explosive and kind of seems to have a flair for the dramatic too. I don't know if that's because he kind of seems to be pretty stoic and doesn't get nervous, or maybe he's a guy who gets excited about things and just doesn't wear them on his sleeve as, as much as some of the other guys we've had. But we're, we're blessed to have him because he can do it at any moment. Thanks, Coach.